Welcome back guys, another video, another review of a uh, receiver and this time we are looking at the JVC JR-S61W uh, I want to categorize this one as an um, entry level receiver in both price and performance and specifications nothing fancy, nothing powerful, just a straight up out of the box receiver back in the day. Um, <clears throat> I will be posting the specifications in the description below so you can look up the, the specifications there. Uh, I just got this one in not too long ago and I haven't cleaned it yet. It works, it works great. Um, it needs a faceplate cleaning. Um, these sides here are, as you can see, it's just imitated. It's like veneer, but it's not wood veneer. It's like plastic or something like that, and it's starting to come off. The, the good thing about this receiver, unscrew these three screws, and you can take this one on and replace them with other panels. So I'm going to do that. Um, now, um, what what is what has to be done to this one? Well, like I said, it needs a cleaning. Need some new side panels or of some sort, even if I just replace them or make something custom built uh, in either oak or poplar or something and stain it. Uh, and of course, it needs a cleaning inside. All these controls and pots are dirty. There's static noise, but at some I could adjust the volume to get good sound. Um, so. Um, it, it it will need the, the typical cleaning and uh, let me put it like that it also needs new bulbs in the dial area because that's out <clears throat> so um aesthetically it's a very simple very straightforward receiver um late 70s uh like i said it doesn't have much bells and whistles compared to many other models um power wise I like the power in it. Um, I just did a quick test and I hooked it up to the Sony's here and it sounded really good on those. It drove those Sony's to a good result. Um, it also drove the Klipsch KG4 very, very good. So once again, this amplifier is section in this receiver is not overly powerful but it's not a weak one either and this is something that i have kind of that's my experience with all jvc products even with low numbers on the specification sheet when it comes to watt um they kind of perform very well they they sound more powerful than what they are so i think the power rate rating on most old jvc products are very very conservative because it, it it surprised me like many other old JVC products has. <clears throat> um, I want to say that the sound is on a little bit more on the brighter side than what I'm have heard from Morant and maybe Kenwood. Um, this one is more in the same road or same class or category when it comes to sound, as many Yamahas. Yamaha is also, um, to me, uh, I feel and hear that they kind of are on the bright side. Um, so yeah, this JVC is definitely not dark in, in tone or in, in sound in any way. has a very bright sound, uh, very distinctive tweeter upper frequency range. And a very, very good mid-range. Um, voices comes through as clear, dynamic, and very detailed. So I like that. Now, I haven't tested it with speakers that can reproduce a lot of bass or low frequency. So I'm not going to say too much about that. But on the Sony's and on the Klipsch KG4, I got a fair amount of low end and low frequency out of this receiver. So it's also, even though it's kind of bright and have a very good focus on mid-range and, and, and 
vocals and has a very bright and distinctive and in your face tweeter for many. I didn't mind the tweeter at all. I, I like the tweeter and the high frequency in this. Even though, and with the results that I got from the lower end, I want to say that this receiver is balanced. It, it has a good balance but between the uh, frequency re register from the bottom and up. Um, there is no big missing things when you listen to it. I, I sat down and listened to it for an hour and a half with some different types of music. Once again, I used the Denon. Um, and it, it wasn't like, too much of a different with the different types of music. I got a fairly good result with much, many types of music. Of course, I want to say that the, the, the music that stood out was the music that had a, a heavy, was recorded with a, a heavy focus on vocals, mid range, and high frequency, and maybe a little bit less drums and bass and stuff like that. But let, let me tell you, music with uh, a lot of bass and drums also sounded really, really good. Uh, cymbals and piano sounds on this one came through as very, very good. Uh, as good as Pioneer and Morons and, and Kenwood and Sansui. Now, does it have the charm, the looks like the other ones? No. Like I said, this is a very straightforward... I want to call it entry level receiver. It probably was an entry level receiver back in the day, um, and it 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 is specked out that way. The only thing that I found was a little bit weird is on the back side. Let me show you. Um, as you can see, where I have hooked up the RCAs, you have phono and you have rec. You have phono and tape, rec and play. And that is all you got. There's, like I said, no aux or an auxiliary. Um, nothing like that. So I, I plugged this one into tape play, okay? And when you look at the front, and you look at the front here, you have power on and off, you have a bass, you have a treble, and then you have a source over here. And the source is where you normally find, like, auxiliary or aux, AM, FM, and phono and all that stuff and then you have the balance you have the, the wheel for the fm dial and then you have loudness tape uh, which is monitor source on and off and high filter on and off well if you look at the source it only say am fm fm mute and phono and so when i plugged it in i had to push this button over here this one here the tape monitor source to and that has to be pushed in to get music from the DVD player. So if you connect the CD player to this one, this is where you put it on all the way in, and then you have to put the RCAs in the tape play on the back. So there's no source, uh, own dedicated source, uh, the destination on the source wheel for tape. That all is being done with that push button. So that was a little bit, mm -mm, okay. <laughs> and another thing with this one that I really like, if you look at the back, um, okay, of course you have the antenna uh, hook up uh, if you want to use an external antenna. And then you have the internal antenna. And this one is the typical thing that you can take in and out. This is for transport and packing. And when you get a set up, you put it out, pull it out, and it stands like that. Uh, you have one um, extra outlet for power. And what I really like about this one is the speaker terminals. There. They're push buttons, but they're solid. They're big. They're, they're good quality. And they take quite a big of a, a gauge or gouge on, um, on the speaker wire. You can put up big speaker wires on this one. Uh, I haven't, I'm not using any fancy speaker wire here just for testing, but um, I like this compared to what Sansuvi and Pioneer and Canwood and Morans use on many of their um, entry-level receivers. Um, this is, in fact, a better uh, type of speaker connector than many of the competitors. So this is a big plus. Big plus. I like that. Uh, <clears throat> now, overall... What do I give it? 
Well, I give it two thumbs up. Even though it's an entry level, not very powerful, not very fancy, doesn't have all the bells and whistles, but it has what it needs. And it doesn't fool you in any way. It's a very, very honest receiver. So when you plug up some CD player or a DVD player or a turntable, if you want to, and you hook this up to some fairly uh, efficient speakers, mid-sized speakers, maybe with an 8-inch woofer, 10-inch woofer, something like that, maybe even a 12-inch woofer, or, a, or either way, a two-way or three-way or whatever you want to do, if you, if you have fairly uh, efficient speakers with high sensitivity, this receiver will do the job fairly well. Um, and the sound is very, very good. Um, I did uh, compare it to um, another receiver over there, the Kenwood 5150. Um, this one is not any worse than the 5150 from Kenwood. In fact, I think I prefer the sound from this JVC over the Kenwood. There is something about the sound in this JVC that I like more than the sound in the Kenwood KR5150. That is also a very good receiver for, for its size. But I liked, there was something about the mid-range and something about how this receiver from JVC reproduced vocals. The vocals were a really strong point in this receiver. And if you listen to, let's say, some jazz or blues or any type of music with a lot of vocals in them, this will be a good choice as a for a receiver. So if you're looking for a receiver that is not breaking your bank or emptying your wallet in any way, shape or form, this JVC uh, JR-S61W is a very, very good alternative. You can get these from anywhere between 40 and 120 bucks, all depending on, of course, condition. I have also seen them as long, low as 17, 18, 19, 20 bucks, but of course, then there is probably some work that needs to be done to it. When this one is cleaned up and I get it cleaned up on the outside and the inside and get everything taken care of, I'll probably list this one somewhere in the neighborhood of $99. That is a fairly good price for this type of receiver, the way I feel. So, if you have a hundred bucks to spend on a spend on a receiver, this JVC is a freaking good alternative. So, two thumbs up, and until next time, take care.